Nice river, huh? Yeah. We could use a few more of these out west. There's a bone out there. Hello? Hello, it's Berger. Come in. Go for Clark. Any signs of them? Not yet. Well, what's taking so long? Running late, I guess. Still up river. Running late. That's great. It's just great. Did you get anything from Quidditch? Said they left free and clear. It's a signal? No. accident in northern Quebec involving Prime Minister McLaughlin. There was a third person on the boat. A female, name of Manzel. Her body's yet to be recovered. And the Prime Minister? He was airlifted to Fort Rupert. Condition critical. We're waiting. Inform the whip and the house leader and let me know when the cabinet is assembled. I'll call Rito and inform the Governor General. The details are slow in coming, but what we can tell you at this point is that emergency crews, both land and water, have been dispatched. We break away now for a news bulletin. I have just been informed that Matthew McLaughlin, our 23rd Prime Minister, has been pronounced dead on arrival at 18.34 Eastern Standard Time at the Sacre-Cœur Hospital in Fort Rupert. The tragic accident that claimed his life is presumed to have also taken the life of Madeleine Manzel, a prominent Ottawa lawyer. A spokesman for the Prime Minister's office issued a statement expressing profound sorrow and assuring the nation that there will be a smooth transition of power to Mark Levine. The Prime Minister. Please convey to the Governor General that I'm ready. Reluctant and sorrowful, but officially ready. As yet, there is no comment from the Prime Minister's immediate family. A family that is no stranger to tragedy. Their daughter Margaret died 10 years ago. He is survived by Julia, his wife of 42 years. is also survived by his son Thomas, who is currently serving with the World Court in the Hague. I slaughtered 900 people, it must be a...
Responding directly to questions regarding our investigation. I can tell you we'll be undertaking a comprehensive review of security procedures and protocol. I assure you this review will be impartial, it will be intensive, and it will yield answers. As of this moment, our forensic investigation team is on site. This unit will be led by Sergeant Leah Collins, an 11 year veteran with forensic tours in Kosovo, Afghanistan, and Haiti. Figured it'd be you. Got any photos? Anything in situ? All right, how about this woman, this uh, Manzel? Dive team is still searching. Anything I should know about her? Officially? She was Christy Berger's girlfriend. And unofficially, she was banging the big guy, huh? And you just left them alone. I'm a romantic. Jesus Christ. Come on, man. She was vetted. Environmental lawyer, a real tree hugger type with nothing in her sheet. And she was the PM's request. What, what, what are we going to say, no? All right. What about this guy, this uh, Jack? Uh, he's hypothermic, but he'll survive. They airlifted him to Rupert. Anything in his PG? Dugay will give you that. He's he's the local SDC. Hey. I'm sunk here, huh? Well, that's up to the review board, but if I were you, I'd get a hobby. So I understand you know this river guy, Jack. Nothing much to tell. Ex army, family guy, two kids, not much money, but he knew this river. Yep. Okay. Jackman's coming around. Just through the chute is an Astro. I shall pry left. PM levers his paddle with a gun. I mean, he ratchets it down really hard and snaps. The paddle? Right. Well, I sweep right to hold the line while I pass the spare up to him. And Ms. Manzo wasn't paddling? <laughs> oh, yeah. Lily dipping. Anyway, she passes the paddle to him blade end first. Oh, man, it was all my fault. You gotta focus here, Teddy, okay? Well, he drops it. Grabs for it. I should have braced the canoe, but it happened so fast. Boom, we're in the water. Go on. I'm going to ask you to take a polygraph. You okay with that? I'm just looking for clarity here. <sighs> oh, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Bring it on. Water in the lungs and stomach over distension of the pulmonary alveoli, subcural bullae hemorrhage. Did you weigh the heart? Of course. Why do one test when I can get paid for three? I checked the femur for diatoms. The distribution was even and systemic. Diatoms. What's that? It's a one-celled organism that enters the bloodstream through the lungs. If his heart was beating when he hit the water, there'd be diatoms in his bone marrow. And you found them. So he drowned. Before we go to Rito Hall and the official swearing-in of Mark Levine, I would like to turn to Jeffrey Kingman. Jeff, Mark Levine's career path has been unconventional, to say the least. Very much so. In his early years, he was an ardent separatist. Then he jumped ship and entered the federal ranks. He's a man whose intelligence is as fierce as his passion. Indeed, he's a firebrand. And he's about to become this country's next prime minister. I 
McLevin, do solemnly and sincerely promise and swear that I will truly and faithfully. Still no sign of the Manzel woman. Now, to get here, sir, now we found the life jacket, but no sign of the body yet. Well, that river is full of sinkholes, so she'll surface eventually. So what we have here is a drowning. Tragic, but accidental nonetheless. Is that our official position, sir? We have no official position, Sergeant. What we have is a state funeral and an internal review, for which we need a lot of answers, which means we have a lot of T's to cross and I's to dot, which is why I need you here in Ottawa. Thank you, sir. Okay. What? Wasn't there a guy one time, I don't know who, who said there are no accidents in politics? I think it was Roosevelt. The one, the one with the big stick? No, no, the uh, one with the wheelchair. Nice working with you. See you here. And the dignitaries continue to arrive at the Basilica on Sussex Drive, among them the U.S. delegation led by President Monroe. The white-haired gentleman is, of course, Randall Spear, the media baron. We take you now to the motorcade as it makes its way to the Basilica. Have a good spare. Yes, it is, Brenda. But that's Tom McLaughlin, a man who has followed his own path. He's a Rhodes Scholar, a divorcee. He's pursued a career in law and lived something of a peripatetic life. He's a bit hard to pin down, actually. On the one hand, he's defended big tobacco, and on the other hand, he's prosecuted war criminals at the World Court. Twenty-seven years ago, my father articulated a theme that would inform his long and eminent public life. Service. I'm sorry. I... <clears throat> I have no doubt these words are heartfelt, but I, I didn't write them. And I'm not sure that I'm... The truth is, I have no idea why my father entered politics. Whatever his initial reasons, however, I know that they changed. And I know this because I was there to see them change. Ironically, it was on a canoe trip. I was, uh, I was not an easy teenager. <laughs> and my mother insisted that my father take me on a paddle down the Great Nahani River thinking it might shake me into line, which it did. But as much as it shook me, it rattled my father to the bone. One night we, <clears throat> we sat on the bank of the river and we watched this herd of caribou through the valley. This impossibly huge sun was setting. This equally huge moon was rising. And I looked at my father and I could see that he was crying and I said, boy, why are you crying? And he said, because this is ours. All of this is part of our country. And we carried that moment. My father and I. We carried that. And 
from that point on, whenever he was presented with the question, what is Canada? My father never had to search for an answer because he knew. He knew that the question itself is the answer. Is your name Teddy Jackman? Yes, my name is Teddy Jackman. And to those who live among us, and they do live among us, who would say, what is so rare about this nation that we should struggle to preserve it? My father would say, for shame. For shame. And he would buy them a ticket on an airplane or a train or a bus or a boat. But he himself would drive them to another country so they can look back at their own nation and see it for what it is. See it for its singular beauty. Because we, we are like the river. We're always moving. And we are not set in stone, because even the hardest of stones cannot endure. And the only thing that does endure is change. The ever-whirling wheel of change. And we are not finished. We are not nearly finished. We are not remotely finished. No, sir, we are not finished. Lachlan's eulogy has prompted an outpouring of sentiment nationwide. The Lachlan struck a deep emotional chord. That's just the kind of political gold campaigners have wet dreams about. I'm... What the hell? Didn't you see this coming down the track? He wasn't scheduled to speak, sir. It was a last-minute thing. It's like a shooting gallery, this country. Mark, please calm down. The man says he has no interest in politics. Well, let's say that's a sham. What does the smart man do? He gets out in front of the problem, calls a convention, and ratifies his leadership. The nation needs stability. A cockroach can live for nine days without its head. Why wait? You have the delegates. Are they out of the house? They're packing as we speak. Well... They all seem to love you, my son. You're a palpable hit. Now with you, I take it. Oh, I thought it was a masterful piece of bullshit. And apparently, all off the cuff. Well, if you can call an entire lifetime off the cuff, I guess it was. They're going to ask you to run. Over my dead body? Over your... Father's dead body, you mean? How have you managed to keep it a secret for so long? What? The fact that you're a battle axe. <laughs> La bonhomie de Bordeaux, mon fils. <laughs> is it just me? Or is this bum's rush slightly unseemly? You were only ever a tenant. True. But I've never been evicted before. And I can't say it agrees with me. He was no saint. We both know that. But underneath it all, he loved us. He's in with provisions, but yeah, he's back to run. That opens the door in the marathon. And with McConnell, that opens another one in the West. If we could do this, guys, if we could get him to run in the sling, we could be talking about our next prime minister here. Yes, this is the new editorial policy, and I want it applied to all my assets. That includes the conventional broadcaster, the specialty channels, and the 203 newspapers. Water is the only story. Pound the hell out of it. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency released figures today suggesting that the drought in the U.S. heartland is at its worst. Polar icy has its finest since the last ice age, according to a report tabled by the Vermont.
the Northwest Passage theoretically open to heavy shipping. Concerns are being raised about Canada's capacity. For sake, I must stress to this review that the body in water will float face down. Blood will rush into the wounds, which will be naturally washed clean by the water, which makes it impossible to determine whether the wounds were post or perimortem. Further analysis of the organ tissue. Thank you. That's enough. I have no abiding interest in knowing the contents of my husband's stomach. No, no Tom. The liberating thing about being the wife of a dead politician is that one no longer has to engage in hypocrisy or accept condolences from a corrosive little shit like you, Mark. And since you have unceremoniously elected to kick me out of my house, You'll have to excuse me, I've got bags to pack. Well, I'm sure that was as pleasant for you as it was for me. But I thank you nonetheless, it's a much appreciated courtesy. Oh, that's the least we could do, sir. If there's anything else. I don't think so. Although, I suppose I, I should take your cards. FIT? Forensic investigation team, sir. Thank you, Sergeant Collins. Tom, your father. He's the reason I'm no longer a civilizist. He's a great man. You know how I feel. No, Mark, can't say that I do. You kicked this great man's wife out of her house with barely enough time to pack. Spectra found a trace deposit angle and gunwale in the midsection. Did you match blood type? Yeah, same type as Manzel's, but it wasn't a gush ring like that. I'm talking teeny weeny. So it could have been a paper cut, a broken blister. It tells us nothing, right? It tells us she was in the boat. Sergeant Collins? Yeah. Hi. Hi. John Pritchard, CSIS. Oh, look, I really don't want to step on anybody's toes here, but you want us to check and make sure there's no jurisdictional overlaps. I understand. We're looking at an accident that resulted in one confirmed drowning and one presumed. Nothing out of line? Hematology, prints, tissue? Really nothing. I think you just might be stepping on the toes there, Don. I hear you. I'll, I'll step out. Uh, mind if I check in with you? Time to time? You'll be my guest. Appreciate it. Good hunting. I just hate those spooks. Me too. We don't call them spooks anymore. We call them freaks. You can see it, sir. You can see it as well as we can. The country's drifting. It, it's wounded. CSX is down 700 plus as of today. And the dollar? Shaking like an old lady. We've been checking the poll numbers, sir, and they're unbelievable. Even on cross tabs. You hit a home run in that church. That's what we need. This country needs a home run. I appreciate your enthusiasm, guys. But for all you know, I could be another tougher. Tougher? He was PM in the 1800s, less than two months and seven days. As I would not be a slave, so I would not be a master. Abraham Lincoln. You make a great case, guys, but I'm not your man. Sorry. Sergeant Collins for Tom McLaughlin. Come in, Sergeant. 
It's not quite the official residence, but we call it home. How do you find fingerprints if something's been underwater? We put it in a vacuum chamber and mist it with gold dust. It raises the ridge patterns. Hmm. But you only found one set of prints, and Jackman said that he passed the paddle to Manzel, who in turn passed it to my father. Jackman cleared the polygraph, sir. Why weren't Manzel's prints on the paddle? Maybe she was wearing gloves or uh, long cuffs. You're like a mystery, don't you? Is that a segue or a conclusion? <laughs> it's neither. I asked you here because I wanted to thank you for your contributions to the review, in particular for the details you chose to omit. I refer to Ms. Manzel. In my father's lexicon, Canutrip had a unique definition. It's not something my mother needs to know about, so. Thank you. Are you going to run, sir? The public office, you mean? No, I don't think so. You didn't vote for me. Well, I, I thought the tribute to your father was very moving. Doesn't mean you vote for me. Do you even vote? I could be persuaded. I see. And would that persuasion be a difficult undertaking? Not if you stay on message. Are you saying... Are you saying I could put a sign on your lawn? If I had a lawn... Yes, you could. So in the interest of healing our country's wounds, I will request the national executive of our party to call a leadership convention at the earliest possible convenience. Okay. Yes, we'll Mr. 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 Well, you got what you wanted. Did I? Oh, please. I'm your mother. As I recall, you were the one who didn't want to move. yourself some heavy duty sneakers. We're gonna run. We welcome those viewers just tuning in to what is proving to be one of the most exciting conventions in many years. To put you in the picture, Gary Schreiber has just pulled out of the race, freeing his some 280 delegates. Charles Samore, what does that do to our projections? Well, Michael, we have three men standing. Mark Levine, Cam Ritchie, and Tom McLaughlin. And the spread is very close, making Clyburn's withdrawal critical. It frees up 280 delegates. All right. So 280 votes out there, people, and every one of them's up for grabs. Let's go, 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 let's do it. I think we can safely say those liberated delegates will have no trouble finding a date tonight, have you, Clyburn? <laughs> no, Michael. They're everyone's favorite drink right now. And in my experience, that drink is three parts seduction and two parts arm twisting. For a second, Dave. Stop thinking about this guy and listen to what I'm saying to you. Really gross, that's five more. It's actually 622. This is insane. <laughs> this is totally out of control. Who's your daddy? <laughs> <laughs> it's a madhouse out there. Let them, those boys, run it. It's what they do. <laughs> I might win. Mm. And then what? I love you because he's a full head of hair. And he's just like the country's most eligible bachelor. And he's a virgin. But not in that way. I mean, virgin. Youth and vigor versus age and experience. Anthony, isn't that about the way you see the fault line? Well, yes, I do. I call it. 
And certainly the youth vote in McLaughlin's convincing by-election victory supports that. But there's another factor at play here, and that's the odium that lingers around Levine's separatist past. Odium. I'll give them some goddamn odium. Now, please stop this. What do you want? Want me on my hands and knees begging to cam rich here, man that spits on the sight of me? Leave Richie to me. When we need him, we'll reel him in. Hey, it's Collins. I was wondering when you'd call. What have you got? That's what I don't have that's bothering me. I went to a second opinion on pathology, and my guy won't commit. It's an open door. There's only one set of prints on the panel, and uh, they belong to Jackman. Want to send me those reports? Why don't I just bring them to you? I've been doing a little digging myself. Look at this. Our man, Jackman. I'm just a river guide. The man is hardcore. Can you repeat that, Michael? It's pretty loud down here on the floor. Are you sensing a shift in momentum? Yes. Yeah. The excitement in the McLaughlin camp is crazy. Charles, put us in the picture. Well, Michael, our unofficial head count has McLaughlin carrying most of Clyburn's delegates, which would give him something around 39%. And Levine is sitting at 42. It's close. No question. Is Richie in the driver's seat, either? I'd say so. The big question is, what does Cam Richie want? This isn't going to come cheap. Richie is a man of integrity. And that's just a polite way of saying kick me. He's a typical wasp. Lots of buzz, no sting. Faye's making a move on Richie. Okay, so we got the job. You gotta make Richie a counter off. Not an offer, a question. Okay, what does he want? And if he wants the store, give it to him. He's thinking fisheries. What fish? Defense? Or army? Finance? What money? You know, Cam, a man is the sum of his compromises. You can't play the game if you're standing on the side of it. You know how this is supposed to go, right? In exchange for your support, I'm supposed to offer you a captain post. I'm not going to do that. Then why should I support you? Because I'm not going to do that. Jackie said they tipped in here. That's where they found the Prime Minister's body, that lady over there. 25 times I've done this. And this dummy's the exact same proportions as the PM. But it never ends up there. Five times you've done this. Yep. And as yet, there's still no word from Richie's camp. I have to break in here, Michael. I see Cam Richie's head of his point. Mr. Richie, what can you tell us? Well, Monsieur Levine's uh, parliamentary record speaks for itself. <laughs> but you know, Brenda, sometimes we forget this is about democracy. And democracy is not a political machine. It's an attitude of the mind. Are you saying Levine offered you a backroom deal, sir? I'm saying my heart goes to the honest man always has. And I believe the democratic attitude of mind honestly burns inside Tom McLaughlin. You told me he could be bought. So I made a mistake. You sold me down the river. Politics is a rough game. Understandably excited, Michael. Cam Ritchie's endorsement gives them a fighting chance here, but of course it all comes down to the ballot box. This hall is about to explode. Charles. It's too close to call, Michael. 40 or 50 votes will decide this thing. Yes, you'll have to go all the way back to 1919 to find the leadership contest this close. When Mackenzie King defeated Fielding by a margin of only 38 votes. Exactly living large, is he? So if you're looking for Teddy, you're out of luck. And like it's not even hunting season. And where is he going hunting season? He's got a camp outside of Madawaska. Or so he says. You find him, shoot him for me. I'll even pay. The president of the party is stepping up to the podium. 
ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, the results on the board, no hands are down. Matt Lavigne, 892. Tom McLaughlin, 1,000. Congratulations, gentlemen. The boat is in the water. Here, here. Cheers. Thomas David McLaughlin, to solemnly and sincerely promise and swear that I will truly and faithfully, and to the best of my skill and knowledge, execute the powers and trusts proposed to me. He filled his mouth with water and inserted the rifle. The bullet displaced the water, and uh, the water displaced his brain. You're so positive. No bruising, no chips. Nobody forced that barrel into his mouth. Left a note. sake look at me maybe you could try to Slate for the next 30 days. Coded by department and accompanied by timeline. And I will deal with details on an individual basis as we move forward. But today I would like to jump on a couple of hot button issues. First up is Orizak Trust and those charming mafiosi from Belarus. Where is my Solicitor General, Mark Levy? <clears throat> well, let's pray to God it's not terminal. I'll throw this over to finance. Cam, do we have these mobsters in a box? Yes, we do, sir. Under C-22, Chapter 17, Proceeds of Crime Act. Now, Leo, let's pull the trigger. As of tomorrow, end of day, all assets of Orizak Trust will be frozen and seized. Any objections? Good. Next, the Ungava Compact. Now, this is one of my father's better pieces of legislation, and I failed to understand why it is sitting on a shelf. I believe it got bogged down at the regulation stage. It shouldn't have been. It's good for the First Nations. It's good for the country. So it's coming off the shelf. All orders in council relating to PC 1321 will be enacted, and I want them gazetted by this time tomorrow. Any objections? Good. Next. The one issue that will undoubtedly kill us all. Healthcare. 
Prime Minister McLaughlin tabled an ambitious agenda that recalls much of his father's action represents a major breakthrough for the First Nation. Yes. Take you back to the office. On your desk, you'll find three postings options. Consul's general, your choice. Compensation more than agreeable. What do you want? This isn't personal, friends. It's just governance. Friends are friends. Business is business. Sorry, friends. There was a major shakeup of the PMO today as the Prime Minister replaced his chief advisors. Incoming staff include Deirdre Mills, a recent media advisor to Tony Blair, Nate Morgan, a specialist in corporate turnaround, and Doug McKay, who lately mediated for the World Bank on third world debt relief. The country also has a new clerk of the Privy Council, the office that oversees the vast civil service. I'd like to uh, extend my gratitude to the Prime Minister and underline my uh, dedication to smoothing relations between the bureaucracy Sorry, the public service and our elected officials. We use 500 times the water than the average Swiss citizen. 1,000 times that of someone in Pakistan. Let's face it, people. We are water pigs. And on behalf of the company, a spokesman said that the manufacture of one computer microchip required 500 gallons of water. If the municipality can't guarantee the water supply, they may be... oil producers, Albert Grant, here's toe-to-toe, and it's all about who gets water. is the thing that dominates the agenda of the Burnham Woods Institute. Gathering of the world's wealthy and powerful. Almost 400 million acres are in drought. 80% of China's rivers are unfit for human consumption. And 50% of her cities are in water shortage. To underscore the problem, the Yellow River didn't reach the sea for 253 days last year. The bullet removed the soft palate that entered the cranial cavity and shredded the brainstem. So the cause of death is gunshot. <laughs> yes, of course. But he was going to die anyway. You see these string formations? Whoa, whoa, repeat that. String formations? Yeah, string formations on the liver. Well, that's from drinking, right? Is he drunk? I'm well, sure he was. But this is cancer. Terminal. Two months at the outside. Okay. Jackman had the cancer, Leah. The guy was dying. Thanks. Choose the time and place of my own demise. It's an odd word, demise. It's almost antique. Graphology has confirmed it as his handwriting. And there's still no sign of this, uh, the woman's body? Madeline Manzel. No, not yet, sir. Filled with remorse, dying anyway. Makes sense, I guess. So, this is. Oh, what is that hideous word we overuse these days? Uh, closure. No, such a thing is possible. The downside, of course, is that you will no longer visit me. I made you uncomfortable? Not entirely, Prime Minister. Would you mind not doing that? What, sir? Calling me Prime Minister. It's very bulky. <laughs> I'm really not very good at this, am I? By this, you mean... Talking to you. Oh, good men never are. Maybe it's just my gun. <laughs> you saying I'm gun shy? Maybe. I was married, you know. I'm not anymore. And uh, I think it's largely my fault. I'm very driven and... Judgmental. Anyway, it ended poorly, so uh, I may be a little gun shy. Can I ask you about that scar? I don't know you very well. No, that's true. 
So, uh, maybe you and I could, sorry. Yeah. The internal review is tabling their results, sir. In spite of the review's conclusion that this tragedy was accidental, we have undertaken a number of measures. In addition to resignations and disciplinary action, we will begin implementation of the new security protocols as outlined in Appendix C, Justice Green's exhaustive report. Jackman was the heart and soul of this place. Never said anything more than yes, sir, no, sir. Unless he had a few too many pops, like at the Airborne reunion or whatever. And then what? I could show you. We made a cake. Make it a coffee? Well, it is a memorial cake. The memorial tapes, as a rule, don't come free. Twenty-five bucks. Good car. Help us with the new building. Here. papers, were they delivered normally? Dave. I've got something you have to see. VHS? It's going to take a little doing. You're a big reader. Not particularly. It just seems that every man I've ever slept with has given me a book. Relationships, are you? I don't know if that's true. I had one that lasted for nine years. And then I went to Kosovo and I came back with stuff he couldn't live with, and he left me with stuff I didn't want. Like this TV. Some of that door is closed for good. Closed, but not locked. Here. Yeah. There. See him? Jesus. 
Don Pritchard, Canadian Security Intelligence Services. What the hell's a freak doing with the river ride? See the mouth that voice is coming out of. <laughs> You're hilarious, Steve, but this is not a date. Now, what do you got for me? For you? Anything. Anything but Pritchard, that is. No one by that name on the payroll in ceases. Not even on our dark list. Just can't come from. Steve, if I knew, I'd tell you. It's not good enough, Leah. Yeah. Well, that's all I got. I'll be in touch. There's no one named Pritchard that works at CSIS. Last time I was here, it was only a thousand. Those Euchre nights must be really raking it in, huh? Not local, but he comes by some. At least he did up till Teddy snuffed it. Do you happen to know what Mr. Pritchard did for a living? Who is Pritchard? Who did he call himself? Yeah. <laughs> now, this ain't no charity. Fifty bucks. Worthy cause. Help us with the new building. Guy's name is Holt. Lieutenant Daniel Holt. The Ungaffa compact was McLaughlin's senior's pet project. Yes, it was, and the PMO pushed it hard. It passed both houses without problem. Then it sat on the shelf. But the regs and orders in council were written up, weren't they? Yes, but they were red flagged and never implemented. The bill just sat there. Until Tom the Younger dusted it off and signed all the OCs. And here's where it gets kind of interesting. One of the main environmental negotiators on the bill was also the main architect of the orders in council. Who? Madeline Manzel. The woman presumed to have drowned. Marie, are my black suits back from the cleaners? How's this for an idea? What do you say we clear some of the rhetorical shit off the table? The mother of all bills is coming due, and it has a name. It is called health care. And no matter what you as the Premier of Ontario or you as the Premier of Quebec claim publicly, we all know you are running deficits in double digits. Your fiscal houses make Uganda look flush. Eventually, you're going to turn to me. Well, my friends, the bank is empty. So you've run us here for abuse? I invited you here to propose a way out. Two birds with one stone. Healthcare equals hydroelectricity plus X. And what's X? We share a common resource. One that could provide us all with sustainable wealth. But we will have to be brave. Are, are you talking about water? The voters would kill us and the First Nations would carve us up. I believe you are all familiar with Grand Chief Blackfire of the Assembly of First Nations. Yeah. It's nice to be finally at the table. Just a security precaution. We none of us leave this table until we have an agreement, at least in principle. Cut the pictures. Tell me about order in Council 1451. Well, as I read it, from now on, any time a federal project involves First Nations land, the requirement for environmental impact assessment is minimal. Minimal as in? Minimal as in gone. As long as the contractor has native partners, they don't have to do environmental impact studies. Who the hell would allow that? Well, nobody in their right mind, and that's when Matthew McLaughlin made a flag up. But here's the thing. When his son took it off the shelf the other day, all of Manziel's original wording stayed. Nothing was changed, not one word. And the effect is... Take a look at one order in Council 3, 2102. It assigns a joint federal-provincial contract for the construction of a hydro corridor to a company called Cantron Steel. 
Where is this hydro corridor? Northern Quebec, and it runs through cremation lands. Now, because of the Ogawa Compact, it's not obligated to the usual environmental impact studies. These specifications make no sense. 300 yards wide, 60 feet deep, and the whole thing to be fenced? This is not a hydro corridor. Then what is it, Minister? I have no idea. This is not for hydroelectricity. Okay, here we go. Department of National Defense, Army Service Records, hold D, Lieutenant. Peacekeeping tours in Cyprus, Kosovo. Kosovo? Jesus. Special Ops Training, 22nd SAS, Herefordshire. Second into JTF2. Don Pritchard, a.k.a. Daniel Holt, was involved in a car bombing in Kabul three years ago, listed as KIA. Wait a minute. Our guy is a dead guy? Officially, our guy is a dead guy. Mark! What's wrong? This stupid machine, it's all pop-ups. Then I click and... More pop-ups. What is the IJC? It's the International Joint Commission, I think. They regulate boundary waters, no? Yeah. They oversee things like uh, the Great Lakes, for example. It's bilateral. It's U.S. and Canada. We have point three, they have point three. Has there been anyone in the house today? No, just me. Is something wrong? Um, uh, it's Mark. Uh, can you send someone from IT over here? I've got a computer problem. Also, can you pull out the recent appointments to the International Joint Commission? Thank you. What's happening? I don't know. I checked out the IJC appointments. Two of them were meaningless. The third, Alec Davies. That's a different story. Was in Davies a consultant on the free trade negotiations back in the 80s? He was there when water fell off the table. After that, he took over as CEO for a company called International Water and Power. That's an American company. Traded on the big board. Davies built the company up and left it last year, no parachute. International Water and Power secured future contracts on water supply to 23 municipalities in the U.S. and Belt. Find me someone in environment, someone we can trust. Someone in the basement. You let the UGG know that we're sympathetic to the grain subsidy. Oh, and here's a Lulu. 15 million for a museum of dental implements. Bounce that one back to heritage. So how are we playing out there? You've got several tracking poles in your desk, sir. It's looking good. The ground is soft, the water issue's playing. I think we're in pretty good shape. And what do we bring in the US? I say we wait till the state visit. There is one other concern, sir. We've been crunching the calendar, and we're getting worried about the timeline. And by law, your father's mandate runs out in six months. We don't think that six months is enough time to get everything done. You're saying we might have to call an election? It's a possibility. You know, an outstanding homosexual once said that democracy simply means the bludgeoning of the people by the people for the people. Let's do a little bludgeoning. just with your father. I was, I was with him in the water.
know how much you know about water, sir, but what I know is that we are all downstream. We are the only nation on the planet that has refused to ratify water as a human right at the UN Human Rights Commission. Strange, huh? Maybe not so strange if you take a snapshot of North America. This is the breadbasket of the U.S. It is fed by the Ogallala Aquifer, 580,000 square miles of an underground lake left after the last ice age. Now, back in 1914, there were less than 1,000 drills mining that water. Today, there are over 200,000. The water table is dropping by six meters per year. It'll dry up in 10 years. Moving west, Virtually every river has been dammed or diverted. They're all drying up and the reservoirs are filling up with silt. You see, water is a zero-sum game. If you're running out, you basically only have four choices. Find another source, reduce consumption, lower the population, or steal it. Our current trade agreements made theft legal. Back to source. Something else would have to feed the breadbasket, like the Mississippi River or the Missouri, but they in turn have to be fed, which brings us to the Great Lakes. But you can't just drain the Great Lakes, so you look further north where you find James Bay. It was called the Grand Canal Project. The plans were drawn up in the 60s. Build a causeway across the top divert the rivers into the bay, force the salt water out, convert this into a fresh water reservoir the size of Lake Superior, build a corridor to pump this fresh water over the shield into the Great Lakes, drain the Great Lakes, feed the breadbasket. Oh, it doesn't stop here. The, the whole 49th parallel is lining up Lake of the Woods over to Lake Winnipeg to the Rapid the Alameda Dam to the Old Man Dam and finally the Fraser Watershed. It's one big reservoir waiting to be drained. But thank Christ it's never going to happen, right? I mean, <laughs> you, you'd have to be some kind of evil genius to pull that one off. Because first you'd have to secure the water contracts to pay for it and you'd have to find a way around the environmental impact assessments and, and then you have to You'd have to stack the International Joint Commission. Yeah. Like, that's ever going to happen. Analysis confirms that the rock fragments in Manzel's skull came from the river. Mm -hmm. What else? Well, we ran the bone marrow for diatom. We didn't find any. None? None. She was dead before she hit the water. Blunt force trauma to the back of the head. Very strong blow. There were three people in that canoe. Chapman had Ra kicked in the back of Manzel's head. The Prime Minister panicked, tried to jump out of the canoe. Chapman cut. Held him under the water till he was dead. This is now a murder investigation. I had no choice but to keep the cabinet in the dark. The emotions that swirl around the issue of water are so primal they preclude reasonable debate, but I implore you, Mark, look at it rationally. We are still a nation of hues wood and draws water. There isn't a thing that we don't pull out of the earth, hack off the ground, haul out of the oceans that we don't sell. We don't sell water. Bullshit, we don't. We sell 200 million liters of bottled water into the United States every year. We treat it as a commodity. And next month, the grievance will come before the NAFTA tribunal claiming just that. And under NAFTA, if something is considered a commodity, it can't be withheld from the market. It's a bullet to the head. They're probably going to win, and there is nothing any government can do about it. I didn't make this bed, Mark, but it is the one I sleep in. From free trade to GATT to WTO to NAFTA, it is a straight line to this conversation and no fucking around. In two weeks, the EPA will release a report revising their estimate for when the Ogallala Aquifer runs dry downward. It's eight years. They will need water, and when they need it, they will take it. And that puts us in the shitter. Unless we can do a deal now. 
dictate the terms, manage the resource, and exact the price that will sustain this nation into the future, because the alternative... <sighs> there is no fucking alternative. We could tell the truth. It's not an alternative. That's a failure of leadership. You know, your father used to love this park. We often come here when there were big decisions to be made. Never talked, just walked. I'm counting on you, Mark. Mark, for the love of God, there's nothing sacred. We are talking about water. And so is every newspaper and TV station and radio station. You think they stumbled across this idea on their own? No. It was handed to them. McLaughlin has framed the question, and the question is this. Your neighbor is thirsty. Would you deny him a glass of water? No, I won't deny him a glass of water, but I will give him a glass of water, not sell him a glass of water. It's the core of life. How can that become a commodity? If a country, any country, Mark, opens that door, that door cannot be closed. That country will be lost. You're hysterical. I'm just telling you, Mark, you're going to let him do this? We've been partners for 22 years. If you think I'm just going to roll over for Tom McLaughlin, then we've wasted a lot of time together. I can't just snap my fingers, Matty. He's the prime minister. And if he wakes up tomorrow morning and decides our official language is Swedish, we'll be speaking Swedish by lunch. His approval rating is in the 80s. He controls the civil service. That's a lot of leverage. Me? I have wept. The courts? The government can't sue the government. You can bring the government down. For that, I need votes. To win a non-confidence, I need all the opposition and a lot of my own party. I don't have that many friends. What about this informant, this person who leaves you these notes? I don't even know who he or she is or, or what side they're on. No, I, I'm alone. These politics are lethal. So in the end, it's only about politics. In the end, there is only politics. Find anything on Manzel? That river is like God's washing machine. We got nothing on her clothes, nothing on her shoes. But we got her wallet. It contains the usual stuff. And hey, this. A clipping. From the Far Eastern Economic Review, no less. So we run at minus 200 degrees. Like magic, the ice crystals in the paper turn into voila. Is there any way we can enhance this photo? Not with a water mold, but you know the name of the publication and the date, so you get access to archives. Southern Saskatchewan, but the leads contained. And the West Wing wants to firm up the agenda for the DC visit. And finally, uh, well, there's something we think you should see, sir. It's a copy of the Manzel autopsy. The contents are disturbing. Oh, 
cutter could get a hold of this. A secure source. No one on the investigating team knows we have this. Okay, um, give me, uh, just give me a, a minute here. I'm sorry I kept you waiting, and I, well, I hope this didn't seem like a summons, or, can I, uh, would you? Like a drink? Yes, thank you. So, what does your night hold, Sergeant? I'm thinking about a romantic evening, you know, maybe dinner for one, a little wine, who knows, I might get lucky. <laughs> I think you could, uh, accompany me to a dinner at the Chinese Embassy. I don't think that would be a wise career move, sir. No. No, probably not. Oh, God, who designs these things? They're diabolical. Yeah. I understand you found Manzel's body. That must be grisly. It is. What's the word? Uh... Onomatopoeia. That's what a corpse is, I think. And I can't help wondering what she was like when she was alive. Was she kind? Was she funny? I wouldn't know. I never met her. Thank you. And so what were the results, anyway, of the uh, autopsy, I mean? Well, it's not complete yet, but uh, all the evidence is pointing towards... Accidental drowning. Well, you won't be missing anything tonight. The Chinese ambassador, I'm told, only has one sentence in English, which is, your country is beautiful, and I have only one sentence in Cantonese, which is, wa hun shi wa da pao. What does that mean? Means, I'm going to shoot my cannon. like your father. <laughs> it's not quite the same. Say the worst thing my father ever did, and then add on, then add on some more, and keep adding on. Even then you won't get close. I don't understand you. As long as I run this shop, you never will. It's my burden. Twenty-five thousand. It's a simple question, Etienne. Twenty-five thousand dollars twice. Who made the donations? It's called an anonymous donation because it's anonymous. Facts instructions. And he was wired directly into the trust account. With no conditions. Only one. When the new hall opens, it's called the Jackman Branch. 
Give me the transit number. It's in. Where the bank it came from, or I will make your life a goddamn nightmare. This leaves my office. The law society will kill me. Where's your fax machine? The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency released discouraging statistics. The continues to plague America's heartland, where water rationing is enforced in over 32 counties. Many Prime Minister McLaughlin was in Washington for a state visit today. He and President Monroe met for more than two I'm proud to announce that our country has a new friend, someone we can do business with. We talked about the war on terror. We talked about our mutual security. And I made a personal appeal to the Prime Minister regarding the drought that is currently choking our heartland. He has agreed to consider a one-time-only emergency measure whereby we would take a tiny, and I mean a tiny portion of our shared Great Lakes and get it to those folks who desperately need it. And so it begins. for you. Sir, I need your help. A river guide with terminal cancer who has since committed suicide had a grudge against the Prime Minister and Kelvin and his mistress. God, yes. There's more, sir. There's more. Tom McLaughlin told me he had never met Ms. Manzel. That's Madeline Manzel on the right in that photo. It was taken in Wuhan in central China. It's a signing ceremony for the Three Gorges Dam project. Tom McLaughlin was working as a consultant for the World Bank, and Ms. Manzel had written a series of environmental disclaimers on loan conditions for a company called the Cantron Steel. Cantron Steel. You realize what we're talking about, don't you? Only a couple hundred billion dollars in the future of a country. Madeleine Manzel wrote a series of regulations for a bill that would have paved the way for a massive project to sell water south. But the regulations were red flagged, probably by McLaughlin Sr., and the bill was never implemented. And then one day he takes her on a canoe trip. Why? can't just be for sex. No. He needs to talk to her. Not just her. Those who are working above her. You're right. The canoe trip was just a pretext. He was trying to send a puppet master's a message. A warning. Then he dies. Gets killed. Killed, Jesus. And his son rises. And the whole scheme is alive and cooking. Kicking, sir. And what? Kicking. I'm going to have to push with Lachlan and see where this leads. What's your guess, sir? I don't know. There was a fanatic one time, an English fanatic. He said, necessity hath no law. He beheaded a king.
Did this man, Jackman, did he act alone? We don't believe so. Another man keeps cropping up. Uh, Lieutenant Daniel Holt. He was Jackman's superior in the Airborne Regiment, but he introduced himself to me as a CSIS agent. Is he with CSIS? No, sir. Bolef is out of him now, but Army records indicate that he died in Afghanistan three years ago. There is a word for this, is there not? Yes, there is, Prime Minister. It's called assassination. You know, this house we're in was built in 1866 by Joseph Merrill Courier. He was a lumberman, served as an MP. He built it as a wedding present for his wife, christened it Gorfwistva, which I am told is a Welsh word that means peace. If I go public with this, I could drive them underground. If I don't... But sir, if I could suggest... I'm not looking for advice, Sergeant. The time for that is past. What I need now is loyalty and support. Do I have yours? And do I have yours, Mark? Without reservation, Prime Minister. Thank you. If you would be so kind. Of tonight's speech is the Detective Duguay. Don Pritchard. Ceases. Good to see you again. Ladies and gentlemen, the Prime Minister of Canada. My fellow Canadians, good evening. Bonsoir. Moments ago, I was informed by the Solicitor General of Canada that there is reason to suspect my father may have been assassinated. My father? You think you're playing in a sandbox? My father? Measures had to be taken. For the greater good. I am my father's son, and I will drag you all to the very bottom of the ocean. As a son, my grief knows no words. Quand premier ministre, ma responsabilité est claire. We're all underwater. You think you alone will float? It's all or nothing, Tom. You can't back out now. There is no plausible deniability. In Kosovo, the Tigers would mark you so the follow-up teams would know which ones to kill. And they would mark you with an X right here, like this. Consider yourself. 
Marked. Under no circumstances will I allow the sovereignty and integrity of our great nation to be imperiled. Your government will meet this threat with all the resources at its disposal. I am the Prime Minister of Canada. You are just businessmen. All of this, everything, everything we wanted to achieve could have been achieved without your fucking stupidity! From now on, I run everything, and I do mean everything. That includes your man in the field, this assassin. From here on in, from now on, I call the shots. What are you going to do? Watch me. To this end, I will evoke Article 3 of the Emergencies Act. These war measures will be in place for a period of 120 days.